What is going on guys, it's Punch here, and today I'm going to bring you guys the ultimate guide to increasing Windows 10 performance with inside of games and general tasks that most users will be going through. The purpose of this video is to eliminate any issues that you might be having on your PC if you have any slowdown, any stuttering, and to ensure that your frame rates are kept as high as possible inside of games, your loading times are fast, your buffering times are fast, etc, etc, and to keep your PC running in tip-top condition and almost like it's brand new. Now if you guys are pleased with the results by the end of this video, please do leave a like on this video, it will help out a ton. If you guys can go ahead and share this video around with any friends or family that might be having PC issues as well, or anyone that you might know that could use a helping hand in getting better performance out of their PC, no matter what the budget. Everything inside of this video is completely free. You're good to download everything. You're good to follow all the steps without spending a penny. And I guarantee that you'll see great results. Talking of results, at the end of this video, at the end of this guide, please do leave some feedback below in the comment section. Again, and please do share around the video. It'll be deeply appreciated. Okay, so whether or not you guys have gone through any of my FPS guides before or anything like that, what we're gonna be doing is starting off from the beginning, and this is gonna be purely on Windows. Windows based optimizations. Now for you guys who might have already been following my content, if you guys have seen any of my FPS guides, please do follow along with this as well. You'll see a lot of the similar steps inside of this video, but there will be some advanced ones in there to ensure that you're getting the best performance possible. And for everyone who's new here, if you guys want to go ahead and also go into the description below for later on, I've also got a guide to increase your internet speed and make sure that your network speed is running as fast as possible on side of your PC as well, which I do recommend watching at the end of this video. Right, so starting off, what I'm going to be doing is going into the bottom left, pressing the Windows button and typing in percent app data percent. Once we've typed in that, we're going to be pressing the enter key and we're going to go into the app data folder found here at the top. We're going to go into local, scroll all the way down until you see a folder called TEMP double click inside of there. Now what we're going to be doing inside of this folder is we're going to be highlighting and dragging all files and folders from the top to the bottom and then we're going to right click once they're all highlighted and press delete. It's going to tell you that the action cannot be completed for all files and if it says this just hit do this for all current items and hit skip. It might ask you to do that again hit do this for all current items and hit skip until you're given this screen. Now 99% of the time you're not going to be able to delete every file and folder inside of it. You're more than likely going to be left with a couple of files and folders but that's completely fine as long as the majority is gone that's fantastic. This basically removes all temporary files with inside of your PC that your PC no longer uses and just takes up excess space from files that haven't been used for potentially years depending on when you last reinstalled Windows. It's always fantastic to know how much space has actually been removed out of this folder because I get rumors from people around about 60 to 70 gigabytes. Some people it's only a couple hundred megabytes but it's always fantastic to hear so please do let me know in the comments below. Now once we're done with that what we can do is we can just exit out. Another thing what we're going to be doing is going into the bottom left typing in run press enter. You'll be given a tab that just looks like this. Inside of here what we're going to do is type in prefetch press OK. And you'll be given another folder. Yours is more than likely going to have more files and folders in it than I do. And just like we did with the temp folder, we're going to highlight everything inside of here, right click and delete. If it tells you it can't delete any items inside of here, hit the skip option just like you did before. And we can now exit out of there. Next, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be disabling excess services with inside of Windows. To do this, go to the bottom left, type in services and press enter. You'll be given a tab that just looks like this. Now inside of here what we're going to be doing is we're going to be scrolling all the way down, it's in alphabetical order, to the S section. And we're going to be looking for a service called Superfetch. Here it is. And for me it's disabled. We're going to be right clicking on Superfetch, going to properties, set the startup type to disabled. And if the service is running, which it more than likely will be, press the stop button, wait for the service to stop. And once you're given these options here and you've got disabled and stopped selected, press apply and then hit OK. Once you guys have disabled the Superfetch service, scroll all the way down. Now, if you're running Windows 10, we're going to be disabling all of the Xbox Live services found here, just like we did before. Right click on the service, go to Properties, Startup Type Disabled, Service Status Stopped, Apply, and then OK. We're going to be doing that for Network Service, Game Save, Auth Manager. Monitoring will not be allowed to be turned off. Windows will not allow it, so that's completely fine. So you can skip out monitoring and Xbox Accessory Management. Once you guys have done that, they should also start Type Disabled and they should not be running. So now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be scrolling up until we find this service found here, which is called DM WAP Push SVC. Once you find this service, right click and also disable this service by startup type disabled and stopping it, pressing apply and OK. Another good service to disable if you don't actually use fax because it's 2017, right click on the fax service and also disable. And if the service is running, stop it, press apply and then press OK. Okay, so once you're then done disabling all of those services, you can just exit out of the services tab. Now what we're going to be doing is cleaning up our PC using msconfig. Go into the bottom left, type in msconfig. You'll be given a tab that looks like this. We're going to be going with a selective startup. We're going to be loading system services and load startup items. 
make sure those are selected. Then we're going to be going over to the boot option at the top. Inside of here, we're going to be clicking our C drive or whether our version of Windows is installed to. We're going to be highlighting that and going to the advanced options. Inside of here, we're going to be checking the number of processes. We're going to go into the drop down menu and select the highest number there. Make sure you also use your scroll wheel to ensure that you don't have any more processes. For me, the amount of cores my PC has is six. So my max number is six. You guys might have more, you guys might have less, but just ensure that you guys have selected the highest number there. Once you guys have got that highlighted, we're going to be pressing OK. I also like to select the no GUI boot option. And I also like to set my timeout to three seconds. It's usually around about 30. Now inside of here, your results may vary using this option. So if anything doesn't feel quite right, just come back inside of here, unselect no GUI and put the timeout back to 30. You can just do the reverse of the steps I just showed you. But for me, these are the options that work best and I do recommend giving them a go. Once you guys are done with that, press the apply button. Go to the services tab found here at the top. We're going to be hitting hide all Microsoft services. Now inside of here, depending on how long you've had your version of Windows installed for, you're either going to have a lot or a little amount of services inside of here. What I want you guys is I want you guys to go ahead and disable services that are unnecessary inside of here. Like for me, the Skype up data service, I no longer use Skype or I don't even use it enough for me to care about this running in the background. So what you do is you just uncheck any services that you don't want running in. Origin web helper service, I never use that. So I personally have that unchecked. And the rest of them inside of here for me look relatively decent. The arc one here, I'm going to disable as well. Now, if you guys aren't sure about turning anything off in here, you're not sure whether or not you use anything, it's best to just leave this alone. But if you guys know if you don't use any programs anymore, make sure that you uncheck the services from it. Again, you don't want anything unnecessary running on your PC. Then once that's done, press the apply button, press OK, and then it's going to tell you that the PC must be restarted for these changes to apply. We're not going to be restarting yet, so we're going to do exit without restart. Okay, now what we're going to be doing is going in and sorting out the Windows settings. So go into the bottom left, hit the little settings cog found here, and you'll be given this tab here. Now inside of here, what we're going to be doing is pretty much turning off every unnecessary Windows option and setting that is running in the background, and this will increase performance drastically, especially for you guys running on lower and mid-range PCs. So we're going to start off by going into the system option found here at the top left. We're going to be going inside of notifications and actions. Now inside of here, all of these switches, we're going to be switching to the off position. Get notifications from apps and other cedars, off. All of these are left off. Just copy these. Get tips, tricks, and suggestions and windows, off, off. And these should not be able to be changed. If they're grayed out, that's perfect. Inside of the power and sleep options, you guys can set these to whatever you want. I personally have them both set to never. Once you're done turning off these options found inside of here, go up to the top left and hit the home button. Then we can skip out both devices and network and internet. And we can go into the personalization tab. Inside of here, I recommend setting your background to a solid color rather than a picture. This ensures that you just have a much more snappy experience inside of Windows. It's not a drastic increase, but when you add up little increases like this, they do make a big difference. So I personally just stick with one of these colors here. I personally go for this bluish looking lilac looking color. Once you're done setting the background, press the home button again and go into the apps folder. Now, once you guys are inside of the apps folder, I recommend going down this list and uninstalling anything that you no longer use and or want. So for instance, A3 launcher here, I no longer use this. So I'm going to be uninstalling it and I'm going to be freeing up 50 megabytes just by doing this. I also recommend removing any excess Windows slash Microsoft Corporation apps that are pre-installed in your PC. So go in here again, even if it's a Microsoft Corporation one and you know you're not going to be using it, just feel free to uninstall it. For instance, I don't use Arc anymore. So I'm also going to be going ahead and uninstalling that and feel free to remove any old printers, any old phone software and for products and stuff that you no longer even use and just make sure that all of that stuff is removed off your PC as there's no reason for it to be on there anymore. Once you guys are done removing any excess programs, apps or features, I want you guys to go ahead and go to the offline map section found here on the left hand side. Once you're inside of here, I recommend pressing delete all maps and deleting any pre-downloaded maps that might be inside of your Windows location. Media connection is going to be turning off. Map updates are also going to be turning off. And that's us done inside of the apps and features folder. Now, once we're done inside of there, we're going to be going into our gaming options. Go inside of gaming, go to the game bar. I'm going to be turning all of this off. So this bar here found at the top, record game clips, screenshots, and broadcasting using game bar. Game bar is a terrible solution to recording your stuff. I recommend going ahead and using something like OBS, Shadowplay, or AMD's equivalent of Shadowplay. Definitely go ahead and use that. It's way simpler, looks better, and is a lot less performance heavy, so don't be using this. Game DVR, we're also going to be going in and turning all of these switches off that you can. Record audio, off. Record in the background while I'm playing the game, off. Game mode, we're also going to be switching off. This is experimental. If you guys find that you have better results with it on, then feel free to do so, but you can do your own research. It's not a universal. If you have this off, it'll be better. If you have it on, it'll be better. It's more of a PC specific sort of thing. So it might work better for you, might work worse for someone else. But for me, I personally have it turned off. Press home once again, go to ease of access. We're going to be going ahead and turning all of this off. Now, 
if you use the narrator inside of Windows or anything like that, then of course you're going to have to keep this on. But for the majority of people, all of this is pretty much useless. So narrator, turn off. Start narrator automatically is also going to be turned off. We're going to be going ahead and turning off the magnifier. We're also going to be turning off invert colors and start magnifier automatically. Now once we're done inside of there, we're going to be going down to the other options. We're going to be doing play animations in Windows. We're going to be turning off and leaving show Windows background on. Press home once again, go to privacy. Now what we're going to be doing inside of here is pretty much turning off absolutely everything. This is the most important part inside of your Windows settings. This basically means that Microsoft cannot send and receive data as they wish to once your PC is on. Again, we don't want anything interfering once we're playing games or, or doing any tasks that might be performance heavy. We do not want any of this Windows crap interfering with that. So what we're going to be doing is changing privacy options. We're going to be turning off all of these settings found here under the general tab. Under location, I personally have all of this turned off as well. Under camera, I have that off. Microphone off. Again, this is only to do with Windows apps. This isn't like if you install Discord or Skype, it's going to disable your microphone. No, these are just apps within the Microsoft store that you might have installed. It will disable all of your stuff for those. Again, the majority of people don't use them, so turn that off. Notifications I have turned off as well. Inside of the speech, inking and typing tab, nothing inside of there. Account info, off. Contacts, off. Calendar, off. Again, my calendar works just fine down there but it's the windows app call history off email off tasks off and messaging is also off radios is off other devices is also going to be set to off feedback and diagnostics what we're going to be doing is we're going to be setting that to basic we're going to be turning off let microsoft provide a more tailored experience windows should ask for my feedback never Background apps, we're going to be turning all of these off. Let apps run in the background, off. App diagnostics, we're also going to be turning off. That means that everything to do with the Windows Store and Windows apps is going to be switched off to ensure that you have the best possible desktop experience. Again, this does not interfere with anything inside of your desktop. It doesn't interfere with any programs like Skype, nothing like that. It's all just Windows app stuff that you more than likely don't have installed anyway. Go back to the home option and go to update and security. What we're going to be doing is going down into the update settings, advanced options. We're going to be going down to pause updates is going to be switched off and we're going to go into choose how updates are delivered. We're going to be turning this option off. And once that's set to off, you can just exit out of Windows settings. Now what we're going to be doing is unparking our CPU and sorting out our Windows power options. Go into the bottom left and type in power and click on any of these battery icons with the plug around it. It might be edit power plan, choose power plan, power options. Just click on one of them. Inside of there, we're going to be going to the power options found here at the top. We're going to be setting our power plan. We're going to be going down into show additional power plans. I'm going to be setting it to high performance. Inside of high performance, we're going to go to change plan settings. Set these according to how you wish to have them. I personally have them set to neither. Change advanced power settings. We're going to be going into the hard disk option. Turn hard disk off, off after. And we're going to be setting that to zero. Press apply. Scroll down to see processor power management. Maximum processor frequency state zero. Minimum processor state is going to be set to 100%. So if yours is not set to 100%, change it. And maximum processor state is also going to be set to 100%. Press apply press OK, save changes, and you can exit out of there. Once that's done, go and see the bottom left, type this PC, right click on side of this PC and go to properties. On the left hand side, we're going to be going into advanced system settings, we're going to be going to the advanced tab found here at the top and going into performance and pressing settings. Inside of visual effects, we're going to be setting them to custom. Uncheck every option inside of here besides smooth edges of screen fonts and show thumbnails instead of icons. Press apply and you're pretty much done. If you guys want that rough looking Windows font, I know some people have requested it and it does increase performance very minorly, but I personally prefer it as well, then feel free to take off smooth edges of screen fonts if you want the rough looking Windows font like I like. Once that's done, go to advanced here at the top, processor scheduling, choose how to allocate processor resources. We're going to be setting them for programs. Now, if you guys have 16 gigabytes of RAM or more, you can check by looking at the installed memory tab found here. I personally have 16 gigabytes, so I'm completely free to do this. What we want you guys to go ahead and do is go into the virtual memory and hit change. Now, if you guys are running with 16 gigabytes of RAM or more, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be clicking on all of our drives here. We're going to be hitting the no paging file. I'm going to be pressing the set and yes. Again, D drive, no paging file, set yes. E drive, no paging file, set yes. And then all you gotta do is press okay and okay. It's gonna tell you you need to restart for that to take effect. Now, if you guys that have less than 16 gigabytes of RAM or more, go inside of virtual memory. And what I want you guys to do is set only one of your drives to have a paging file. So paging file size should be none, none, and one of your drives should have a paging file. To do this, what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be selecting one of our drives randomly, more than likely gonna be our C drive. I'm gonna be hitting custom size. I'm gonna be putting in 4096 and 4096 for both the initial and maximum size. 
and we're going to be pressing set. Now results may vary depending on which drive you put this on, whether it's an SSD, a hard drive. So again, if this doesn't fix any stuttering or anything for you guys and you still might be having issues, try moving the paging file to a different hard drive if you have any other ones available and turning it off of the other ones. So maybe move this paging file to your D drive, for instance, by doing what we just did. But for me, I personally do not want any paging files because I have 16 gigabytes of RAM or more. So press OK and apply. Data execution prevention, I like to turn it on for essential Windows items only, so make sure this only set for essential and press apply and OK. Going up here at the top two, system protection, you guys can experiment with this. I personally have it turned off. If you guys are happy with this guide afterwards, I recommend waiting until this guide's completely done and you're happy with the results. I would recommend that you guys come in here and turn this off. Going over to remote access, I personally do use remote access on my PC. If you guys remote access your PCs as well, leave this on. But if you don't, uncheck everything in here, press don't allow and press apply. Again, this will help you guys. Once it's all done, press apply and OK. It's going to ask you to restart. We're going to be restarting later. Moving on from that, we're going to be making sure that the multimedia class scheduler is running the best for gaming performance with inside of Windows. To do this, we're going to be going into the bottom left, typing in run, pressing enter. Inside of here, I want you guys to type reg edit, just like that, and press enter again. Inside of here, I want you guys to go into H key local machine, go into software, scroll all the way down until you see Microsoft, go into the Microsoft tab, then scroll all the way down until you see the Windows options, and go into Windows NT, go into current version, scroll down until you see multimedia, system profile. Inside of here, what we're going to be doing is going in and setting our system responsiveness. If you guys do not have a system responsiveness file, make sure to make one. But if you do have the system responsiveness file, double click. We're going to be setting the hexadecimal value to zero. I'm going to be pressing OK. It should change to that. Then once we've set our system responsiveness, we're going to be going back over to the left hand side, going into tasks, going into games. And we're going to be setting our GPU priority inside of here. We're going to be setting that to hexadecimal eight. And we're going to be setting our priority to hexadecimal six, then press OK, and you can exit out of there. Now, for another very good boost in performance, I also recommend that you guys go ahead and overclock your GPU. I'll provide a link to a guide in the description. The guide might not be out at the time of this release, but within a couple of days or so, the guide will be released. It will more than likely will be there for you guys who are watching this video right now. So there'll be a card on the screen somewhere and also a video in the description to show you guys how to overclock your GPU. I highly do recommend doing that. But if you guys want to stray away from that, then that's completely fine. But again, I do recommend going ahead and watching that tutorial. But carrying on from that, what we're going to be doing is going ahead and going into the bottom left, typing in this PC, and this time we're going to be clicking on that. Inside of here, you're going to be showing all your hard drives. If you guys are using an SSD, some of the options here will not apply to you, and I will go through that with you guys. For instance, my C drive is an SSD, so if you guys are running an SSD, I want you to right click on your SSD, go to properties, go into the disk cleanup utility, run everything inside of here, make sure this is all checked, and press OK, and hit delete files. It's going to be cleaning up your hard drive slash SSD, so ensure that you just wait for this to finish. Now, for you SSD users, that's completely fine. I recommend you guys then just press the OK button. Now, for you guys using hard drives, I recommend that you guys go ahead, right click on your hard drive, go to properties. Again, run the disk cleanup utility because it's very useful to run on all disks, whether it be a solid state or a hard drive. Once that's run through, go to the tools option and go into error checking. Hit scan drive for errors. Now, for me, my drive didn't have any errors. If you guys do have errors within your drive, just follow the on screen prompt and Windows will try its best to remove those for you. Once you've gone through the error checking, that's completely fine. Just press OK and we're done with this step here. Another quick thing I recommend you guys go ahead and do is go ahead into your downloads, your documents, and go ahead and delete all unnecessary files, all unnecessary applications, all unnecessary games. Just take around about 10 minutes out and go, I no longer need this. I know I don't use this. I haven't used it in ages. I will never need it again. And just take the time to remove that off of your PC. Once it's all removed, just go ahead and empty your recycling bin. Again, another thing I recommend that you guys go ahead and do is download and install the latest GPU drivers for your GPU. Whether you're running an AMD Radeon card or a GeForce GTX NVIDIA card, please do go into the description below and click on the corresponding link which applies to you. And just hit the automatic driver updates for NVIDIA cards found here and hit download. Or the automatically detect and install your driver for AMD Radeon cards which is found here. And the on-screen prompt slash program will pretty much take you all the way through it. It's very simple to do and it can solve so many issues just by doing this. And it shocks me the amount of people that do not keep their GPU drivers up to date. I recommend coming in and doing this around about once a month at the very least 
you should be doing this around about once every three months to ensure that your GPU is running to the best of its ability with the latest and greatest in games. Now with all of that out of the way, we're gonna be moving on to the software side of things to install to your PC to ensure that we can really kick up the performance with inside of your PC. This is pretty much the most important part here that are gonna be run inside of these programs which are found here. All the installation files are found here on my PC. I recommend going ahead and downloading them all in the description below. There's five programs in total. They're very low in file size and I recommend that you keep all of them in your PC. I know five sounds like a big number, but trust me, these programs are here to help your PC and that is just what they'll do. So what we're gonna be doing is starting off with the CCleaner setup. Go to the CCleaner site found in the description below. You'll be given the setup just like this. Once it's installed, you'll be given this icon and run it. You'll be given a program just like this. I personally don't care to update the version. What we're gonna be doing is going into the cleaner option here, hitting analyze, letting this run through. And as you can see, I can remove 9.6 megabytes. If you guys have not used this program before, you're going to be shocked at the amount of space you can free up just by using this. Now, once it says analysis complete, we can just hit the run cleaner option here, press okay. It might ask you to close a couple of programs. It might say Windows Explorer needs to be closed. That's fine, press yes. And it will say cleaning complete. If you guys have not run this before, again, don't expect it to be 1.5 seconds. It will more than likely take a hell of a lot longer than that. What I like to do is hit analyze again, just to ensure that it says zero bytes to be removed. If anything else comes up, hit the run cleaner button until you get this screen here. Go to the left-hand side, go to the registry files found here, hit scan for issues, and you're more than likely going to see pages upon pages, just like I have. You're more than likely going to get more than that because I ran this even just a week ago. And once you guys have got all of these issues found, hit fix selected issues. Do you wish to back up changes to the registry? I personally press no. Fix all selected issues, press close, and scan once again to make sure that it's gotten rid of all of them. As you can see, it's given me another one. I'm gonna fix those real quick. Scan again. And there you go, it's fixed all of my issues. It says no issues were found. Again, what you can do is go into the uninstall tab found under tools, and you can go ahead and uninstall other Windows programs and stuff which do not come up inside of Windows uninstall. Again, just go in here. If you guys see anything that you know you don't use, make sure to uninstall it. Take a couple of minutes. If you guys see a bunch of stuff that you don't really understand and you're not entirely sure what to remove and what not to remove, then just make sure that you do not remove it. Don't remove any of this Microsoft Visual C++ stuff either. And then once you're done with that, you can just exit out of the program. I recommend using these three programs found here, Driver Booster, for an advanced system care and seat cleaner around about once a month. I like to do it personally on the first of every month to ensure that my PC is running in tip top condition. Moving on from that, we're going to be going ahead and installing Spybot Anti Beacon. Once Spybot Anti Beacon is set up, you're going to be given a program that just looks like this, and you're more than likely going to see a bunch of red, and not everything is going to be green for you. So, what I want you guys to go ahead and do is go down to the bottom here and hit the immunize button. I'm going to go ahead and block all of them. And once it says all blocked, I want you guys to go up to the top and hit optional and hit apply to all of these as well to ensure that everything inside of them is blocked. Go down in the scroll down menu just to make sure that everything is blocked as well. And once that's done, that's pretty much SpyBot completely done with. You never have to open this program again because it will refresh the immunization every time Windows is restarted, so that's completely fine. And you're pretty much completely done with that program. It just sits there nicely on your PC. It's only around about 10 megabytes. It's tiny and make sure that you keep it because the benefits are great. Basically stops Microsoft being able to send back and forth data within your PC whilst it's running, whether it be information just gathering stuff on your system specs to feedback for office development or anything like that, you want to ensure that your Windows experience is completely private and no one can intrude on that. Again, this also does help mildly with gaming performance and network performance. Moving on from there, we're going to be installing Driver Booster, run the setup just found here, and you'll be given a program just like this. So once you guys boot up Driver Booster for the first time, it's going to give you a scan option here. Press the scan option, and this is one of my favorite programs to use for both new PCs and older PCs. This is what I always recommend people to download when they're having PC issues, whether it be stuttering, random crashes, or anything like that. It helps out a ton. It will go through and scan every device and every input device on your PC through graphics cards, network adapters, etc, etc, to ensure that it is going to grab the latest drivers for those to ensure that they're running in tip-top condition. This program has helped so many people out. It's fantastic and it's always something I recommend. Once it's done scanning, it's going to tell you that there are outdated drivers. You're more than likely going to see more than four. I only have four that are outdated. And it's very simple to work from here. All you got to do is go into the top right and press the update now button and press OK. It's going to ask you if you wish to upgrade to the Pro version version, but you can also run this for free. So hit continue update. Now, sometimes it does allow you to accelerate downloading for free. If it doesn't, it's going to ask you to activate and that's completely fine. But sometimes you do get to press that button for free and it will speed up this process. Just let Driver Booster do its thing and install everything that needs to be installed. And now if you guys are not using system restore points, it's going to give you this option here. It's going to ask you to create a system restore point to ensure that Driver Booster can install these updates. And if anything goes wrong, it can revert back to the old version of Windows that you were just running a couple of minutes ago. I recommend pressing this
this just to be safe doesn't really mean anything it just means in case anything does go wrong you can just revert back to how you were beforehand now once driver booster is complete it's going to say update completed and it's going to give you a list of how many drivers it actually updated it's going to give you the list entirely down here which you can scroll through if you are interested once it's done what we can do then is we can just go ahead and exit out again i recommend using driver booster around about once every month at the very minimum again once every three months just to ensure that your pc has the latest drivers or if any issues come up in the future make sure that you also give driver booster a go because it more than likely will fix them for you now one of the last programs we're going to be installing is also from iobit the software manufacturer we're going to be going ahead and installing advanced system care link is also in the description to go ahead and download this download this install it and you'll be given a icon just like this now once the program is open you're going to be given a screen like this again it's from the same people that made driver booster so it's going to look somewhat similar what we're going to do is going ahead and pressing the select all option found inside of here and it's basically going to select all of these fixes and optimizations to be applied and then what we're going to be doing is hitting the scan button Okay, and once advanced system care is done scanning your PC, it's going to give you a report. It's going to tell you how many items can be fixed. It's going to tell you what your current standing in terms of security, performance, and stability is. And it's going to tell you how it can go ahead and fix those. Once it's done, it also gives you a list on the left-hand side here of how many files and stuff can be fixed inside of each department. Once it's done, just press the fix button. Go ahead and let advanced system care go ahead and fix everything for you. Okay, and once the fix is completed, you're going to be given a screen like this. It's going to give you an overall report of how many things it fixed it could take a little while it took around about 10 minutes for the fix to completely finish for me and again it says go to speed up to further boost your computer so go to the speed up section found here you've got turbo boost which you can turn on deep optimization it might tell you if you have any things that you can fix inside of here the app slash toolbar cleaner you can also go ahead and install that if you wish to do so to clean up your web browser but turbo mode i'm personally going to be turning this on now what i recommend you guys definitely do is make sure that turbo boost is turned on whenever you guys go ahead to launch a game just to ensure that it's releasing excess ram and stopping applications and services in which do not need to be running in the background just to make sure that your pc has the freest amount of resources and is completely clear to ensure that you're getting the best performance on the application in which you are running or the game hardware accelerate there's no point in pressing this because it's just going to ask you to install driver booster and install driver booster for you which we've already run through so that's completely fine and you can also just go around for a quick nose around inside of the protect options inside of advanced system care go inside a toolbox have a look around inside of there you can read up on things inside of there as well and i recommend that you guys definitely use this again around about about once a month if not every three months and once you're done inside of there all you can do is just exit out now the last program inside of here is going to be called timeresolution.exe and what i want you guys to go ahead and do is run this as administrator every time you go to boot again another extensive program whether that be a game or a editing application or you wish to ensure that the program is running to the best performance possible go ahead press the maximum button inside of here and once you're done hit default and exit out so again once you go to run your program hit run as administrator, hit maximum, and then just hit the minimize button to ensure it's running in the tray below. To summarize what this does, it basically speeds up Windows code to ensure that Windows and the drivers themselves can communicate as fast as possible to ensure that whatever the program or game is requesting access to, that it gets access to that. And basically Windows and the drivers can speak faster to each other. That's pretty much the most basic way I can explain it to you guys and what that does. Now once you guys are done inside of there, again, the only thing you really need to keep outside of there is time resolution. You guys can even choose to remove all of this because it's pretty much done with now. I do recommend keeping C Cleaner, Driver Booster and Advanced System Care though. Make sure that you keep those programs and run them again around about once every month if not once every three months just to ensure that you stay up to date with the latest and greatest inside of optimizations from both programs fixes security fixes and the best drivers for your system possible now for you guys running nvidia cards what i want you guys to go ahead and do is right click on your desktop go to nvidia control panel inside of the nvidia control panel go to the adjust image settings with preview tab and select use advanced 3d image settings once that's then been selected hit apply in the bottom right and go to manage 3d settings here on the left hand side under global settings what i want you guys to go ahead and do is copy all of my settings found here just pause the video i will scroll down and copy everything to make sure it's corresponding with my options Once you guys have set all of those, make sure that you hit apply in the bottom right, and then you can exit out of NVIDIA control panel. And that's pretty much it, guys. That is the ultimate guide to increasing performance with inside of Windows 10 for gaming and other personal usage, no matter what that might be, whether that be video editing, word processing, or just overall internet browsing, but it's mainly aimed at gaming performance. Please do post back any results that you guys may have if you've run benchmarks beforehand or afterhand, or if any PC issues have been fixed up, please do let me know in the comment section below. Any feedback for this video would be deeply appreciated down there as well. Please do share this video 
video around with any friends or family who might be having PC issues or anyone that you might know that might also be experiencing any framerate issues, any Steam friends or anything like that, please do ensure that you leave a like on this video if it did help or if you need any more help, again, comment section below is the place for that. Thank you very much for watching, guys. This has been Panjano. Please subscribe for more videos and I'll see you guys in the next one.